mentioning, in case people think w you know, we're, being, we're misrepresenting some of the evolutionists, that there were two justifications for giving human-like feet. One was that uh, they didn't think any other creature could have made foot certain footprints that were found in Laetoli in 1978. Uh, dated at 3.6 million years by their fallible dating method. So they said, well, it must have been Lucy, even though Lucy had been found with almost no feet bones, so they gave her human-like feet. Um, whereas in actual fact, of course, as you've said, she had an opposable toe. Mm. I think mm -hmm. it's uh, appalling, really, that the reconstructions of museums are still shown with human-like feet. When, mm. you, when we know from further fossils now found that all the, f the digits, all the, all the individual carpals and metacarpals and the same on the tarsals and the metatarsals that on the toes and the hands are curved. Yep. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've got and a slide of, of those here of um, mm -hmm. uh, Lucy's, actually, this is actually Lucy's finger bone and foot bone and you can see how curved they are and next to that I've got a picture of chimpanzee um, hand and foot bones and you can see how similar mm -hmm. they are. Human uh, fingers and toes don't have that curvature. So we, we don't spend our time swinging from trees. Some of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk about swinging from trees. The old story is that um, humans or pre-humans um, came out of the savannah and either they became upright as, as they uh, before they came out or they came out and they came out and then became upright and and developed human like feet but if you look at it logically there's a, there's a, a gorilla foot uh, and you can see that that's how the the foot actually looks that's a photograph of, of a gorilla foot and i've just slightly modified it and you can see that if you slightly um modified the, the big toe so that it pointed somewhat bit more um uh, to the the front it will be just a uh, less capable of grabbing hold of a, of a branch and no better at running. In fact, you need to have a solid big toe mm -hmm. to actually take off from when, you, when you're running. So mm -hmm. that foot would be no use. And if, you, if it went even further, you'd, you'd see that um, that would be no use to, as climbing at all and uh, no use mm -hmm. of running. And so that would actually be a disadvantage. So any, mm -hmm. any um, ape that had a child that... Um, uh, developed any mutation that had feet like this would actually be less capable of surviving mm -hmm. so they would not evolve at all mm -hmm. and in fact more than that we know that from human congenital abnormalities if you have if you mess around with DNA and we've talked about DNA before DNA is is designed to replicate more of the same so our children mm -hmm. look like us to some degree um, so if you mess about with what is a working system what do you get you get problems and here's an example of a foot uh, here's the left foot of an individual with uh, slightly deformed toes and the, the right foot um, is completely uh, abnormal and I'm just reminded of what you said um, earlier on in a previous program about um, program cell death, Phil. You might just um, mm. comment on that and compare that once more to um, frogs. Yeah, if you, get, um, if you get an incomplete removal of the material between what are going to become the fingers, you get what's called syndactyly, which is a joining uh, of what should be individual fingers or toes by material. Uh, so a failure of program cell death, which is an elaborate program, uh, tightly controlled by all kinds of molecular processes in the cells. So when it goes wrong, it can only just be, can just be the smallest change. It, it doesn't uh, produce something useful and new. It actually mucks up the whole system and you get deformities, you get disease. In this case, a uh, severely deformed foot, which clearly doesn't give the person an advantage. Yeah. And so just just um, um, remind us again, because it was uh, um, uh, two weeks ago, um, the difference between how the frog embryo... Um, well, and the, the, frog, the frog embryo is its, uh, what are going to be its toes, if you like, are mm. growing by elongation. <coughs> so a cell division um, is taking place. Right. Whereas the human embryo, the limb bud is sculpted out. Uh, as programmed cell death or apoptosis. So there are two completely different two embryological different processes that work right. in, a, in amphibians and, yeah. um, and humans. I've got some other examples. There's um, just to show you that when you mess up the, the developmental programming, you, you get problems. You don't suddenly get better hands or feet. You get some um, problems. There's a, um, an individual, and that's an X-ray of the same individual showing the uh, abnormalities there with the missing fingers. And if it's really severe, mm. you can get this sort of thing where that's a hand 
and in, there are a couple of tribes in, in Africa where they, they marry, intermarry within the tribes and they get a lot of um, problems with their feet and their hands, uh, mm -hmm. uh, this sort of um, thing, mm -hmm. claw hand and claw mm -hmm. foot it's called. And unlike uh, a putative or a hypothetical evolutionary ancestor that's on the way to developing hands, a five digit limb, uh, which does, will, would by definition not have all the information, it's having to add it piecemeal, yeah. that person has almost certainly got most of the programming there intact. It's just that there's a few signals have gone wrong yeah. during development. There's a mutation that's that's mucked things up. So the actual information is still there, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just that exactly right. It's just you know, it's mm -hmm. just abnormal. The tiniest change can produce massive little switches mm -hmm. that. Um, so if you, yeah. if you if you if your switch is damaged, the whole system yeah. goes. Okay, mm -hmm. um, we've talked about osteopathines. Um Phil, did you want to mention this um, unpronounceable character? Is this? Uh, Sahelanthropus. Oh, Sahelanthropus. Uh, yeah, this was found you in Chad. Can you say that very quick? Can you say it slowly? So Sahelanthropus, oh. found in the Sahel zone of Africa. Right. Anthropus means uh, man, and the reason they didn't say Pithecus there is because the canine, that was pretty much all that was found. There was a jaw fragment and a few teeth mm -hmm. back in, I think, 2002 by Michel Brunet and French colleagues. Mm -hmm. um, there was a big, that's actually only an ape-sized skull. There was nothing found below the neck. And there was a lot of talk about this because uh, people thought it was, in some cases, they said it was one of the most important hominid discoveries in living memory. Uh, I remember Daniel Lieberman said it was the greatest pallid uh, fossil find of hu ape humans uh, for a hundred years. And yet, just within days of that being produced, mm. um, Bridget Senut and other uh, colleagues said, no, we think it's an extinct type of female gorilla and the reason for saying that is that the, you've got evolutionary experts who can't agree on the same evidence yeah. mm -hmm. um, but but that is um, was supposed to be stunning fine because the canine teeth were small meant to be more human like its face was meant to be a bit flatter that initial find in 2002 was rather distorted and they've since reconstructed it um, it's now been moved off to a side shoot I don't think uh, many evolutionists are now using that as a as uh, you know, a great find. I've just been reading through a book by Chris Stringer at the Natural History Museum, um, published just a year or two back, and he doesn't even, in his overall graph of, of human evolution, he doesn't even connect it to anything else. It just, it's just there on its own as, what do we do with this? Yeah. <laughs> I think so what it, it kind of reinforces the, the fact that there's an awful lot of diversity in the fossil record. There are lots of varieties of different kinds of apes, including some varieties that don't exist today because the Australopithecines, these southern apes, are not quite like modern no. apes. They're, they're uniquely different in some ways. And we see lots more diversity even within fossil humans, mm. but what we don't really have are convincing intermediates. So, no. so th this, this picture that Sahel Anthropus and all the different varieties of Australopithecines, it just shows that there were lots and lots of different kinds of apes in mm. the past. Yeah. And if you're an anthropologist and you think you found a skull, you just want it to be mm. a halfway between apes and man. Mm -hmm. And uh, that you, you, you've got a, a reputation then. Mm. That, wa that one was particularly uh, tantalizing for people because they, they dated the materials in, uh, surrounding that skull at six to seven million years. Now that at the time was thought to be around about the time when an ancestor common to ourselves and a chimpanzee split into two lines or lineages, one that became humans and one that became the chimpanzee. So you were looking, some people thought, uh, at our, you know, what linked us with the chimps or something like it. Uh, but as I say, that's already, it's so, so quick, the story changes, so quickly the story changes. The headlines are sensational, missing link, found, blah, blah, blah. And what you don't often realize is within weeks, sometimes, it's died a death mm -hmm. in the literature. Mm -hmm and the evolutions themselves are no the longer... The public is left with an impression, though. That's right. right. That there's been yeah. yet another fossil form that has yeah. confirmed evolution. Yeah. And, of course, wh when there is some doubt cast on it, often that's kind of tucked away on page 23, you know, subsection B of your newspaper, mm. rather than front page news like the original find. All right. Let's uh, move on to another... Um, creature called Homo habilis, but in fact it's not just one creature, isn't it? That there's mm. they've, they've lumped a, a pile of um, extinct yeah. creatures into the, this category, Homo habilis, and mm. Homo, of course, means man, so people mm -hmm. get the idea here again there's an ancient uh, mm -hmm. human ancestor type. It's a handyman. Handyman. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well the uh, builder. 
<laughs> Bob the Builder. They found this with Bob. 